one we'll call the natural heart because it looks kind of almost the most realistic looking, okay? I have this large heart and then I have this purple heart here, okay? And they all have a little bit different features. I'm going to start with just the natural heart just because it's kind of the, the easiest to kind of go through, okay? In terms of chambers, when we see the walls of the chambers, the thick wall is going to be the left. So we have left ventricle, right ventricle, just superior to each, okay? Come as close as you want. I have left atria, right atria. Okay, so four chambers. I find the thick walled ventricle, left ventricle, left atria, right ventricle, right atria. So I look at it and say I have four chambers. Okay, other structures. Okay, now when I go to valves, I have two atrioventricular valves. They're between the atria and the ventricles. So we call this one the left atrioventricular valve. Another name for it is mitral valve or bicuspid valve. Okay, so we have three names for this. Okay, on this atrioventricular valve, it's the right atrioventricular valve or the tricuspid valve. Okay, now the valves for the exiting blood are going to be these semilunar valves. I have two semilunar valves, one in the aorta, one in the pulmonary trunk. So I have the pulmonic, pulmonary semilunar valve and the aortic semilunar valve. So those are the four valves, four chambers. Other structures, chordae, tendini, are the small tendons that support the atrioventricular valves. These small little tendons that support those valves are the chordae tendini. The papillary muscles are what attach to those. So these masses of muscle that go up and connect to those chordae tendini are the papillary muscles. The trabecular carnae is the bands of muscle tissue between the walls of the heart. So down here in the right ventricle, there's some bands of muscle tissue that connect the walls of the heart. That's the trabecular carnae. The fossa ovalis is a small white depression that goes between the two atria. So I'm looking in the right atria and I see a fossa ovalis. Okay, it's a small depression. In the fetal heart, it was the foramen ovale. It was an opening. So that's the fossa ovalis. Okay? Now, there was a vessel that went between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. This is now called the ligamentum arteriosum. In the fetus, it was called the ductus arteriosum. So it looks like this little white ligament. So we call that the ligamentum arteriosum. Okay? This huge mass of tissue right here, ligamentum arteriosum there. Okay, this huge mass between the two ventricles is the interventricular septum. Okay, so that covers all of the structures of the heart. Okay, now we start talking about vessels of the heart. Okay, um, we, have, we have the aorta. The aorta has really three parts, ascending, the aortic arch, and the descending. Okay, now on the ascending aorta, the first branches are the coronary arteries. The one that goes to the left side is the left coronary artery. The one going to the right side is the right coronary artery. They are just superior to the aortic semilunar valve. So as soon as we get the pass the valve, the first branches off the aorta are the coronary arteries. Okay? Now, the next branch is this brachiocephalic artery. Now, this brachiocephalic artery is going to do right head and right arm. So when it comes up a little bit higher, it will split into a right common carotid and a right subclavian. The left side is already branched off. So the second major valve come in, vessel coming off is going to be left common carotid, left subclavian. Okay? So this is eventually going to be four vessels going up, two this way, two this way, just the brachiocephalic artery here only comes off as one. So we don't really even talk about a right and left brachiocephalic artery because there is only a right. Okay? There's just one brachiocephalic artery, it's a right. Okay? There is no left brachiocephalic artery. When we get to the veins, it is paired, so we'll get back to that. Okay, so if I take this larger heart, Okay, I have the aorta coming up. Okay, the aorta, the first branch off it is the brachiocephalic artery. When it comes up high enough, it does split. So I see a right common carotid and a right subclavian here. On the other branches, I have a left common carotid and a left subclavian. So those are the four vessels, two for the head, two for the arms. Okay, the right side just starts out as a brachiocephalic artery. Left, in, left subclavian artery, right subclavian artery, left common carotid, right common carotid. Okay, when we look at pulmonary veins, 
Veins return blood to the heart regardless of their color. So when we look at the pulmonary veins, they're returning blood from the lungs. They are going to be red and they're going to the left atria. So here I'm looking at pulmonary veins. Here I'm looking at pulmonary veins. Okay? These pulmonary veins are going into the left atria. They're going to go through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle, up and out the aorta. So those are pulmonary veins delivering blood to the left atria. Okay. Coming into the right atria, we have the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Okay? Um, if I go over to... If I take a look at this part here, I have, I have the superior vena cava. When the superior vena cava splits, these two major splits are going to be brachiocephalic veins. So I have a right brachiocephalic vein and a left brachiocephalic vein. Okay? This goes to a common jugular and a, left sub, a right subclavian vein. Coming into the back of the superior vena cava is the azygous. Draining the heart muscle is the coronary sinus. So this last point that goes into the right atria is going to be the coronary sinus. So I can see the coronary sinus also down here. I'm pointing to the coronary sinus. This is where it goes in. If I take a look at this one, the last part going into the heart is the coronary sinus, and it's that red dot right there. Okay, so I have three things coming into the right atria. Superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and the coronary sinus. One draining the head, one draining the lower body, and one draining the heart. All coming into the superior, or something, the right atria. Okay, when I take a look at this vessel, I have the great cardiac vein right here. Okay, going into the coronary, coronary sinus is a great cardiac vein. Okay, coming around is a small cardiac vein. We had the azygous. We had only the brachiocephalic vein showed up on this model here. So if I point to that, that's superior vena cava. If I point to this, this is the left brachiocephalic vein. This is the right brachiocephalic vein. When they split again, I have the right subclavian and right jugular. I don't have them. Um, if you follow this model up here, you see that this goes internal and external. Um, I have the thoracic duct draining into here. Okay, only on this model do I have thoracic duct draining. That's draining lymph fluid into the venous blood. Um, they show up also on this model of lymph fluid. They come up around the back and they dump into the left subclavian vein. And um, on this torso over here, you can see there's a teal one right there, teal colored one coming in right there. And that's also a thoracic duct draining the venous blood, draining lymph fluid into the venous blood. Okay, so those are the thoracic ducts draining the lymph system. The lymph system is kind of fluid that's leaked out from the blood vessels. On the left coronary artery, on the left coronary artery, I'm looking at the heart as it is in my body like this. This is the left ventricle. The left coronary artery comes out. It branches into an anterior interventricular artery. This is right between the two ventricles. Okay? It also branches into a circumflex arch that comes around the back. It goes around the back like this, right around. It goes around the neck between the atria and the ventricles. That's the circumflex. Um, on the right coronary artery, if you follow the right coronary artery around here, it goes to the posterior interventricular artery. And that's the one that only shows up the best here. This interventricular branches. They don't show up very well in this, so I would just go with the posterior interventricular. So you can cross off the interventricular. This interventricular is just a generic term.
everything, I mean, I'm pretty much, I'm trying to think, aside from having thoracic ducts and kind of showing, this one shows a brachiocephalic, you know, I can't ask you brachiocephalic veins on this one because it's cut too close. This one is great for showing these vessels right around this region here, and it shows the thoracic ducts. It's the only thing that shows a little reasonably well. Um, this kind of makes you think about colors a little bit, okay? So when I put this together, um, this is going to go in the body kind of like this. So when I look at this chamber right here, this is the left atria. These are pulmonary veins. Okay, they have drawn them in purple. Here I have inferior and superior vena cava. Okay, so you, you have to think about this one a little bit more because it's just not as ideal. Okay, it shows the valves, it has everything in here. It has a thick wall chamber, a thin wall chamber. So a lot can be done with that model also. Okay, um, arteries, okay? This, all, this model also shows the heart very well, okay? This large flat model. Um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Because we're so, we have so many of these, make sure I'll get a couple out. Can you guys just get that one and lay it over there somewhere? And you guys make sure you lay this over there somewhere. Okay? Okay, so trying to keep in order here. Okay, arteries of the body. The first thing, so this actually is a very good model of the heart also. Okay, we take a look at this. I mean, it shows left ventricle, right ventricle, atria. It shows pulmonic cell and valve. Even though it's small, a lot shows up on this, okay? So, we have the, a the aorta coming up, okay? The first branch is going to be the brachiocephalic artery. So, I mean, it's not easy to point to, but there is something branching off, and I can't see it that well, but I could point to that and know that that's a brachiocephalic artery. It comes up a little further, and it's going to break into the common carotid, right common carotid, and the right subclavian. The right subclavian is going to feed the arm. Now, this starts out as a brachiocephalic, splits into the right common carotid and right subclavian. The right subclavian has a branch right here, that then it goes into the armpit. So from here to here, this is the axillary. Okay? Once we pass the axillary, we hit the brachial. Okay? So it all makes sense, that's a part of the arm. Okay? This brachial splits into a radial and ulnar artery. Then it goes to the digitals. Um, let's come back. So I have, I have, digialis is the veins, digialis veins. I have a palmar venous arch right there. Um, I don't have a superficial palmar. This, uh, let's see, that's, this is a superficial palm, palmar arch here, okay? The palmar venous arch I don't have. This is the superficial. This is what's just inside the palm of your hand, superficial palmar arch. So cross off the palmar venous arch because that's what I don't have on any of the models that I see. I have a median cubital right here that crosses the midline, often where they draw blood. I have a basilic and a cephalic out here. I have a brachial that's been cut out of this model, okay? So you can see something large has been cut, so that's the brachial, okay? So I have a basilic, a cephalic, and a brachial. Where's the median? Median cubital's right here that crosses the midline. I come up. Brachial is right here. Once I hit here, I'm axillary. Then up here, I'm subclavian vein. Now, when the subclavian and jugular come together, this one shows a short segment where they come together. That would be the right subclavian vein. It's a very short segment, though. I'd have to have the 